Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you guys all had a good fantasy year. As we head into 2024 and the Christmas season, let's find out who made the naughty list and who was a good boy this year. Let's go. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to another holiday-themed episode of the Dynasty After Dark podcast. We're your hosts, Calvin Timms and Dale Terry, and we're back with a fun episode today as we get ready for Christmas. Hopefully you guys are out there and you're having a good holiday season, and yeah, hopefully you guys are still alive in some of your championships. It's semifinals weekend this weekend, and uh, I've got one team left. Luckily, I'm still alive in one league, so we'll see what I can do, but Hopefully you guys made it, and by the time, I really want to put this out there early in the video. If you guys have any, because you're going to be listening to this on Friday, that's when this drops. If you guys have any starter sit questions going into the weekend, hit us up. This is a very critical weekend. I'd love to give you guys some game-winning, championship-winning advice if I can. If you trust me, you know, obviously if you're listening, you're looking for some advice. So if you want to know any start sit questions, hit us up on YouTube, hit us up on Twitter, on X, whatever you want to call it. Anywhere that the podcast is found, if we see your comments, we're going to answer them all weekend long. So yeah, let us know if you guys have any questions. And if you're looking for us on Twitter, you can find me at TDC underscore Calvin. You can find him at Dynasty underscore Dale or the podcast at FF After Dark. And again, we're on YouTube, Rumble, Spotify, Google, Apple, anywhere the podcasts are really found. Obviously, you're listening to, listening to us somewhere, but if you want to look for us elsewhere, we are everywhere that you guys need to be. So hit us up with any questions. Again, I want to help you guys get some uh, some championships here this next coming week. But that said, Dale, how are we doing today? Hey, I'm I'm doing pretty good. You know, uh, I'm really excited to talk about some some overachievers and underachievers today because you know that's really what you know Dynasty is about is is valuing these guys and seeing where they're at and 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 trying to either buy them or sell them at good times and that's you know I'm I am ready for today. Yeah, there you go. And that's one of the fun reasons why I like this episode. Um, hopefully, you guys are in a league with no trade deadline. This, this, I, there were some comments last time when we talked about the trade mm-hmm. deadline. Yep, you know, absolutely. pros and, yep. and, and cons and all that stuff. Yeah. I'm going to say, the one league that I don't have a trade deadline in, it's been a lot of fun. I made a deal just last week where I sold, yep. um, I sold Brock Purdy, for example, to the Justin Herbert manager because he was going into the playoffs with only Geno Smith in a super flex league, needed a quarterback really, really badly, yikes, yikes. and was willing to move uh, willing to move Justin Herbert for Brock Purdy. And it's all opportunity based, man. That's what I'm talking wow. about. So I got Justin yeah. Herbert, who, uh, and to be honest, Purdy is not that far behind Justin Herbert. He's been balling out this year. So it's not he even like been, it was a yes. crazy trade, but it wouldn't have happened if I had a trade deadline. I just want to put that out there, yeah. guy. You know, I'm just saying. I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah. Saying. And, 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 and I definitely hear both sides of the argument. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is there, and there could be some collusion and stuff like that if there's right. – I'm assuming it, you know, that, every, that I'm, so. I'm the optimist. I assume everybody's a nice, yeah. decent person, but I know that the scumbags are I, out there. <laughs> yes, there, there, there are plenty of scumbags out there, unfortunately, and they're trying to ruin your league. Yeah. So if you yeah. are in those leagues, try to get them out or, get or just into, get out of get those into leagues. Better leagues. Get into my leagues. Yep. I'll make trades with yep. you. I'll make fun trades, yeah, you know? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. All right, so that said, we're going to get into a fun one here today. We're going to recap some players, and I know that the 2023 season is not yet over. There's still a couple more weeks. You know, as we head into Christmas weekend, there's a lot of games that are going to be played here. There's still three more games total for the NFL season, regular season. That's going to change a lot of perspectives on a few of these players as we kind of wrap up the season. But for the most part, there's not going to be too many guys that are going to shift massively. There might be one or two. Um, if some of these rookies, for example, come on really strong at the end here, there's going to be a lot of hype about them going into next season. But for the most part, you know, through 15 weeks, we're pretty well established on how we feel about a lot of these players. So thought it was a nice time to get into a little bit of a recap especially with the the holiday theme of naughty and nice list here. We're going to talk about some players that really underperformed for their 2023 standards, what people were expecting from them. Um, We're going to talk about what we see for the future for some of these players, whether or not they're going to continue this, whether or not there were just 
um, extemporaneous circumstances that that led to this or whether the players just kind of washed. So we're going to talk about the naughty list. We're going to talk about the nice list. We got one player, each of us, for each position. So we're going to be talking through about 16 players, so quite a few guys here. We're going to try and get through it pretty quickly, but we're going to have a good time as well. So, you know, if you're here for a good time, well, we might be here for a long time. So, uh, exactly. you know. All right, Dale, kick us off. Who is your quarterback? Naughty player. We'll start with the naughty list. All right. So so on the naughty list for the quarterbacks is the man with the beautiful mane, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Um, he, he's he's been very underwhelming this year. You know, he he is he, he is the quarterback 11, which is fantastic, you know, mm-hmm. and I feel he's I feel for I feel unfortunately for a lot of people. He was their quarterback one mm-hmm. and I felt he's just kind of just been. Average. Yeah. And. And then if you traded for him, like you didn't pay an average price for him, like you paid a premium, you know, it's, 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 it's coming off a, a, a top eight finish last year. Uh, you know, he came off really hot last year and played really well in the playoffs. And then he's just, I mean, he's done okay, but it's just not what you really expected from him. You yeah. Know, it's solid. It's, 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 it's good, but it's, not, but you know, especially like if you don't, if you're in a one quarterback league, I think you, you might have to look, you might have to start looking elsewhere. Yeah, and that's where it's kind of it's kind of crazy because if you look, you're not wrong at all. Um, if you look back to the summer, he was valued around the dynasty uh, quarterback number five, and, mm-hmm. which is crazy. Um, nope. You know, I like the potential of him. Don't get me wrong, but I always thought that we needed to see a little bit more before we kind of crown some of these guys. But he was very highly valued, and now mm-hmm. um, he's already moved down from five to eight. He has performed at the quarterback 11 rate this year, and it's been more missed than hit, in my opinion. Like, he's been fine, but, you know, someone that we talked about a little bit earlier, Brock Purdy, honestly, I would probably rather have Brock Purdy than Trevor Lawrence right now. I I, don't disagree with that. That feels like it's going to be a hot take, but, you know, I think Brock Purdy's really outplayed, and he's been just phenomenal for fantasy football. Mm -hmm. Who cares if it's the system? Who cares? Look at Tom Brady. Tom Brady for the first, you know, seven, eight years of his career was a system quarterback and it won him three Super Bowls. You know, who cares? Now he's the goat of all time because they can adapt and they can learn to run these things on their own. And 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 that's what I'm worried about Trevor Lawrence is that he's 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 been propped up on this pedestal his whole his his whole life, Mm -hmm. honestly. And you know, um I feel this is one of the first times he's faced a lot of adversity, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, you know, and I, I think sometimes he, he props himself up, but I don't, I, I don't think he plays consistently enough to bring his team to that, to over the hump of, of where you want to go, yeah. you know, for, I mean, it's, it's, it's for, it's for fantasy. That's, I mean, that's not, that's not an important art, but you know, like we just want to keep seeing him progress. And I feel he's really kind of plateaued and almost, kind of tilted mm-hmm. towards a little bit of a decline. Yeah, and I will say he's been playing a little bit better the back half of the season. Um ever since yep. the bye in week 9, you know, he had yep. he had the the brutal performance against uh San Francisco in week 10, but then a 32 25 25 17 14 um whereas the first half, you know, he had 17 14 16 16 14 18. So more highs in the back half than in the front mm-hmm. half, but it's just so inconsistent and we need to see more from him. So, you know, I'm with you 100%. We'll see what we can do. We'll see how he finishes out. You know, the Jags are definitely playing for that division. So it's just very underwhelming and uh, not, not exciting because of the price tag that he had. Would you be looking to, if you could still get the same value, let's say you were selling Trevor Lawrence for quarterback five value right now, would you still be looking to do that? Or are you just holding and, and hoping that it um, kind of bounces back? I I, I think I'm going to hold on him if if I, if I have him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I I think his name has a lot of value to people, mm-hmm. and and they see that, so I think that's that's valuable in itself. Okay. But you know, I mean, but if if you are able to get like a Brock Purdy plus, yeah, for instance, yep. you know, I I I, th- I think I think if it's I think if it's a a, a fairly equal tiered plus like you know like a like a first or even a second you know th- sure. that 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 does offset that sure yeah that's where it's tough and every league is different but um yeah i would if i have trevor lawrence i'm holding but if i i'm not in the in the market for trevor lawrence right now if i don't have nope. him there are other guys especially the guy you're going to talk about here in just about 10 seconds that i would rather be trying to acquire right now um that 
I think they have better potential long term than uh, than Trevor Lawrence, who has the the pedigree, but man, he just needs to live up to the potential. So let's hear your nice player, and then I'll jump over to mine. All right. All right. So my nice pre- player is Brock Purdy. Um, he's he's been fantastic this year. Um, I was I've honestly been surprised of how well and efficient he's played. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's just been going like the past like three weeks he's just gone off you know yeah. he's, he's 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 thrown for he's thrown for multiple touchdowns and i i i actually saw this stat that that like brock purdy and trevor lawrence have the same amount of multi-touchdown games that's and crazy they, yes and, and brock purdy's played like 19 games compared to trevor lawrence's 48 or something like that oh so, you mean in their careers i thought you meant this in their season. career i was no, gonna no, say in their, like in their career cur- killing it but all in right their career in yep. their career calvin so yep. you know I, I think I think he's the perfect system quarterback. I mean, I, I did like Brock Purdy coming out of college. You know, I think he was underdrafted because Iowa State his his senior year severely underperformed and I really think that hurt him. Yep. So so but but I I I think he's the perfect guy for this system. You know, he plays really well with these guys. I, I mean it helps he has these world athletes, you know, these these fantastic athletes around him, which does help. But mm-hmm. you know, you know, like he's He's I, I I think he's averaged like nine point nine per attempt or right. something like that. Like like that's insane. Yeah. So, and the thing the thing with that too, like everyone's gonna everyone's discrediting him because the weapons are so good. Right. But he has those weapons. Who cares if yep. if it's more exactly. weapons? It exactly. doesn't matter. And again, yeah, if it's exactly. a system, who cares? So I'm one hundred percent about this. Again, the trade for uh Justin Herbert. I traded Brock Purdy for Justin Herbert, and I don't even I, I, I'm scared that I might have lost that trade. <laughs> like that's how it's good possible. I think that Brock Purdy is right now and how good he's yeah. playing up to it. And uh I only see him going up from here on out. Um, so I don't think it's crazy whatsoever. And yeah, I, I would definitely be looking to acquire Brock Purdy. I still think that his value is much cheaper than than uh, what it probably should be at this point in time. So yeah. I'm with you yeah. 100% there. And yeah, I love it. I love it a lot. All right, my naughty player that I'm going to talk about here really quickly is going to be none other than uh, the molester, Bill Cosby himself, <laughs> Deshaun Watson. <laughs> and... Oh. Yeah, he's been really underperforming. He's so been far. rough. He's been rough. Yeah, it's almost like he needed a massage this year, but he couldn't get them, yeah. so he has underperformed. But Deshaun Watson, you know, people were very say what you will about him off the field. I don't want to. I'll joke about it a little bit here, but I don't want to. You know, I don't want to talk about it too much here. I'm not letting yeah. that impact his on the field performance which has been bad. You know, a lot of people thought that, okay, last year he comes back in the last six games. It's a lot of ring rust. He's really shaking it off. Looks pretty bad. Give him a whole year with the team to kind of acclimate with training camp and all that stuff. And he's going to be a lot better. Comes out, plays poorly. Now he gets a shoulder injury early in the season. um, That ultimately costs him his season. They shut him down. He had to get season ending shoulder surgery. Um, could not throw the interme- intermediate ball to save his life. He was hitting on all the deep balls, which is really weird, but all the short stuff, it was just like not the same Deshaun Watson that we've seen in the past. Now, the question is, has that shoulder injury been impacting his play all season, or was it just he was bad? And, you know, if it's me, I'm leaning towards more of he was just bad to start the season like he was at the end of last year. And um, it wasn't the injury. He got the injury at some point in the season and it just made it worse. And, you know, Deshaun Watson, he, he jumped up to quarterback number 12, um, which is still That's kind wild. of, it's low That's for, wild. for what he used to be. You know, Deshaun Watson yep. used to be a top three quarterback for oh, super flex yes. leagues or one quarterback leagues. He was number three. And the fall for Deshaun Watson has been, just been insane. He's quarterback number 17. And honestly, his contract is fully guaranteed through injury or not, this guy has no incentive to come back and produce at a high level. Like it honestly feels like after everything that happened in, in Texas and the Texans and, you know, the transition to the Browns and everything like that, the suspension, the off the field stuff, 
it honestly feels like his heart is not in the game anymore. He just doesn't want to play and he doesn't want to go out there and perform. He's going to take his fully guaranteed million, multi-million dollar contract and just go right, right off into the sunset. You know, it's, it's Ohio taxes, so it's not bad. You know, it's just, it's, he gets to live a cushy life without really having to try at this point in his career. Now, I'm speaking on the character of the man. It's entirely possible that he has not given up on football and he's just an unlucky SOB, right? Where all these things are going badly around him and it's, you know, kind of outside of his control. But it's been too long now that we haven't seen good Deshaun Watson and that's what scares yeah. me. So what are your thoughts on, on Watson here? Yeah, and, no, and I, I completely agree. He's okay. He's looked rusty in all of his starts from this year and last year. He just hasn't looked like the same guy. You know, I mean, I, I can't speak of his character outside of, outside of the football field, but, you know, it just seems like something's not clicking. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he he's in a pretty good offensive scheme that seems to really bode well for quarterback play of what we've seen with Joe Flacco, who's right. been slinging it all over the field. and Even you know, Jacoby with, Brissett last year, right? Yeah, yes, 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 exactly. So something's not clicking, something's not right. And, you know, and, and, f- and for the price where people – have been paying for him, especially him coming off of his, off of his year long suspension. Plus, you know, plus the 11 games last year, you know, like I, I think, I think he's been, he's been one of the bigger bust in the last couple years. And it's been really sad to watch him as, 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 as such a good fantasy football player. Well, in, in real life player, just kind of have this sharp decline. Yep. I'm with you 100%. I'm with you 100%. So we'll see what happens. Ultimately, he's going to come back and he's going to win his starting job back. Like well, he, they're going to they're they're paying him too much. He's going to be the starter for the next couple of years even if he's bad, but you know, we need to see something from him. If I have if I have Watson and I can still get, you know, quarterback 12 value for him, if I can move him for like a, a Kyler Murray, even a Jordan Love plus, like I'm looking to do that. I I want out on him. You know, I'm just washing my hands of Watson at this point in time. And, you know, I will let him prove me wrong on another roster. That's kind of how I look at him at this Dream. point in time. Dream. Now, my my player that I wanted to highlight, my nice list player here, is someone that we have been touting the entire year. Hopefully you guys were listening last year when we started going through our rookie rankings. And that's CJ Stroud. And, you mm-hmm. know, a lot of people last year, we... We're in the minority when C.J. Stroud declared for the draft. Um, it was obviously, oh, it's Bryce Young is one on one. Who you can't possibly take C.J. Stroud. Bryce Young is the best quarterback that we've seen in since since Andrew Luck. It's it was crazy talk. It was crazy talk. Bryce Young was not that guy. He was never that guy. He's smart. He's a good player, but he was his measurables were always going to limit him. C.J. Stroud was there at Ohio State, and because it's Ohio State. They don't produce quarterbacks, right? They don't produce guys that can play in the NFL. And it's it's helmet scouting to the T. It and it it's not fair to C.J. Stroud. He played very well his entire college career, and he had all the measurables. The dude has pinpoint accuracy, and he has that dog in him that he's just going to get it done, as we saw in yep. the Georgia game, right? So C.J. Stroud was always number two on our list, one or two. You know, Anthony Richardson, just from the measurables and the the freak of nature for fantasy football, but yep. also C.J. Yep. Stroud because we thought he was the best quarterback in this class by far you know if you go back to our breakdowns we thought cj stroud was a better quarterback than anthony richardson but for fantasy richardson's hard to hard to pass up right well cj stroud went out there and has absolutely dominated this last year you know the the dude is just setting records it is crazy he's got 20 touchdowns to five interceptions 3600 yards in only 13 games played he missed last week he's going to miss this week as well so he's going to miss a couple of games here but that is just absolutely crazy that through 13 games he's got 20 touchdowns to 36 you know obviously he could use a few more touchdowns but when you factor in the count that the Texans also don't have the best weapons right everyone's been talking about this Tank Dell he is a very very good player he has proved a lot of people wrong including myself right but 
He's injured now, so they need another guy. Well, Nico Collins got banged up, and then they're going to Noah Brown, and he also got banged up. Luckily, they have the Browns' first-round pick next year that they can use on a potential wide receiver later on in the draft that I think they're going to definitely do um, and and get a young player to pair with C.J. Stroud. But this team just needs one more elite weapon, and C.J. Stroud's going to go nuts, right? So I think what he's shown through 13 games is just – amazing right there's no other better word better word for it so all right 30 seconds on stroud because he's your boy and you know ohio state yeah i I was about to say i i completely agree he's been fantastic he's had plays that have been called back like in in the jacksonville game a couple weeks ago like like he had this insane 86 yard bomb to I, th- I think it was a Nico Collins. I think I believe mm-hmm. it was. And uh, that was a Tank Dell one. That was Tank Dell. It was one. Tank. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was Tank Dell. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And it, it got called back. Like he is. He's on it. I love him. I, I love his moxie that he's playing with. Um, I'm really excited for him. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think he has a really good future with the Texans and D'Amico Ryan's. And I think they have a good coaching staff around him mm-hmm. that's going to support him. Unlike some players we've seen come come out of the draft. Yep, so that is my our quarterback, Naughty and Nice List. Let's jump over to the running back position here. And before we do that, if you can, like, comment, subscribe to the video. Um, we put out some polls. We're not getting much feedback from you guys. We want yeah, we some are. We want yep. some feedback. We want to be able to answer questions. Again, this mm-hmm. goes to the start sit questions, any questions you guys might have, any content that you guys are really feeling or interested in as well. Make sure you're hitting us up on Twitter. Likes, comments, subscribe to the channel so you're getting all of our content and you can comment on all of it. We we appreciate all your guys' comments and we love to Absolutely. hear from we you do. guys. So there's been a lot of comments on a lot of the last videos, so we appreciate that a ton. Um, and as we go into the offseason, we're going to have so much rookie content, mock drafts, all that stuff. Maybe we can try a couple couple of live mock drafts here this this summer too um, if, if that's interesting to you guys but make sure you're commenting liking subscribing all that stuff so it just helps us too it gets us out there to more people mm-hmm. and obviously yep. more more people that listen gives more feedback more more different type of content that you guys can hear that we want to mm-hmm. put out there for you guys so you know it all just helps we help each other help it help you help you help yourself what what does that say oh it's it's yeah, we all help each other. It, it is what it is. All right. I, I'm mixing it up with the the uh, the Will Ferrell meme, or when he's on the Tropic Tropic Thunder. Is that it? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? The one everybody yeah. love everybody. You know what I'm talking yep, about? Basically. <laughs> but there's another one where every, he's help me help you. That's the Tom Cruise. I'm mixing those two together. That's what it was. That's what it was, you know. It's almost Christmas, man. I'm just ready for the holidays. <laughs> so, all right. Enough of me rambling here. Let's get over to the running backs. Who's your naughty player for all the right, running back position? All right. So, so yeah, yeah. So on on my on my uh, running back naughty list is is who was the running back one last year? Um, at least I believe he was running. Back. He was. Yeah, he was a running back one in in two the year before. It's Austin Eckler of the Los Angeles Chargers. Yep. He's he's had the biggest fall in recent memory that I've had with a running back. You know, probably probably most recent would be Todd Gurley for me. Mm-hmm. Um, in that in that like he 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 was injured pretty early on in the season. You know, mm-hmm. like like his first game was great. You know, he's coming out with twenty six points. He's he's doing his Austin Eckler thing. Yep. And then he's in, and he's MIA for a couple of weeks until the bye week. And then and then here recently, like the past four out of five weeks, he scored less than ten points. Yep. That is not actually last awesome five out of or yeah, sorry, four out of five, you said. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been really bad. Like, I don't I don't know if it's the change in coordinator. I don't I feel I mean part of it is Justin it, Herbert getting injured. It, you know, that that, that is more. part of it. But really before that, like he wasn't he like like his rushing numbers are pretty horrible. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it's 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 his last game against Las Vegas. He he only he had five carries for nine yards. Yeah, like, that's atrocious. Yep. And you know, in 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 only four receptions in that big of a blowout. So like, I don't know what's going on in L.A. over there. I think I think we have better days for the Chargers, but. I'm not sure how many how many more of those include Austin Eckler, unfortunately. So, yeah, and he's he's on the last year of his deal. You got to remember that. Mm, and I oh. think the biggest thing. So there's a few things that have led to this for Austin Eckler. One, changing coordinator. Um, Kellen Moore is not really that guy for the. <laughs> Kellen Moore is not that good of a coordinator, guys. So can we can we all admit that now? Like it's just it, it is what it is. He's he's okay, but he's not what everyone. He's not the savior that everyone thought he was. Two. 
their offensive line was terrible this year. Their offensive line got absolutely worked this year, and that's why it Herbert ended. ended up getting injured again for the like fourth straight again. year. Um, it led to Brandon Staley getting fired. Brandon Staley was not a good head coach. He didn't make the best coaching decisions as well. A massive uptick in the usage of Joshua Kelly, who was objectively bad, um, and we're still playing him, right? Like, he's good. Um, so, bad coaching choices, bad scheme, bad offensive line, and a massive reduction in touchdowns and targets. Like, all of those things combined just imploded for Austin Eckler. And with him being on the last year of his deal, the, the biggest question I have for you, do you think it's going to continue into 2024 with him probably moving on? I think a whole reset of this I, roster yeah, is coming. I, I, I th- I th- yeah, I, I think he's going to move on. Um, I don't know which team he's going to go to. I don't know how much value he has to a team at this point. He's just – he's played a lot slower this year. Mm-hmm. Like, we just haven't seen the explosiveness that we – we have come to know from Austin Eckler. Right. I think that better days are ahead. Um, I think this actually might be a little bit of a buy low on Austin Eckler of he's going to be a free agent. He's going to get to pick where he goes next year, and he's going to go somewhere where they're going to want to feature him. You know, maybe he's not going to be a number one overall type of guy, but his reduction in, um, in, in just total fancy points has just been – ridiculous Massive. right yeah it's it's been horrible yeah so i think that he's gonna have better days ahead and this is just kind of an ab- abomination year but um i can definitely see the flip side of the argument he is 28 years old and mm-hmm. we can see where it goes from there so all right let's let's jump over to your nice player here and who are you going to talk about here all right so on, on my nice list is someone else in in uh in in LA as well uh, ironically enough it's Kyron Williams mm-hmm. uh he he's played out of his mind this year like he came back uh well like he was a rookie last year and he and he and he had a season engine season ending injury and you know something that Sean McVay has never well has has hasn't had since Todd Gurley was this bell cow running back that can that that's able to run the ball for, you know, a hundred, a hundred on the ground Mm -hmm. and get, and get three or four receptions a game. And that's what he's really been missing the past couple years. And I think they found it in Kyron Williams. Um, You know, I I think overall he's balled out this year. He's played fantastic. You Mm -hmm. know, as, as, as as long as he's on the field, I think he's had, he's had two games where he's played, where he's had less than 10 points, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, those are against and good like defenses. It, Philly yes, and Cincinnati exactly. early in the year, their defense was yeah. nuts against the run. Yeah, so 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 I'm really excited about him, and I think he's somebody that I think you could get good value on if you want to trade him. Uh, it's, it's, it's potentially it's 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 because the running back market's so bad that this right. year. You know, ha- has been bad overall. You know, unfortunately. So, you know, but, but, you know, on the flip side, like, I do think he's someone that you can build around. I think, I think he's going to be difficult to trade for because he has played so well, Mm -hmm. but, you know, but like, I think he could be a solid RB2 on your team that can really drive you to multiple championships. Yeah, he's someone that I'm, if I have Kyron, I'm 100% keeping him. His skill set is just it's too hard to get these type of guys that yeah. you believe in that can be workhorse backs as well. Like he is not really splitting the the share with anybody else, you know? And when you can do that in a Sean McVay system, I think that it means something to him, the the coach, right? Like look at what he's done. He had Cam Akers, he had Daryl Henderson, he has Kyron Williams, Todd Gurley. Like if you underproduced, he didn't care. He would talk well about you to the media, but you know, you saw it in the play numbers. The dudes just did not get usage and did not get on the field. Well, Kyron Williams is healthy and when he's healthy, he gets the usage, right? Um, yes, he does. You know, he gets injured in the Arizona game after playing even even after playing 82% of the snaps, gets shut down for the next 5 weeks, right? Um including one bye week there, but then immediate immediately comes back to 61% of the snap. 94, 90, 77. So they just immediately went right back to him and uh, full use at that point. So I think he's earned Sean McVay's trust and he's someone that that's very rare in the current running back landscape to have that for a player. So I'm investing in Kyron. Um, I'm I'm definitely holding. But yeah, buying him might be hard because like you said, he, he's, very, he's very much outproduced what people thought yes. of him and they're going to want a premium on him. I think at this point. 
All right, my naughty player here, and we're going to try and pick it up. If you guys haven't noticed, we're going to try and go through these guys a little bit quicker here on the back half. Um, so we're not here for five hours, but my naughty player for the running back position is going to be Bijan Robinson with the Atlanta Falcons. And this shouldn't really be a surprise, I don't think, but Bijan, you know, came out, declared he's the highest running back drafted in the last couple of years. You know, he went what seven overall, I believe, or eight overall, eighth, eighth, eighth overall. overall. Yeah. And everyone immediately crowned Bijan the best running back in dynasty that we've ever seen. And he was the dynasty RB one. Um, and it's just, everyone had such high expectations on him immediately comes out week one, 20 points week two, 22 points. And that's where the cliff came because you got Arthur Smith. He was playing too well that Arthur Smith said, we can't have that around here. We got to start losing some games. So uh, Detroit, you know, 10 points, 19, 11, 13 point three against Tampa. The, the great game where he was ill, but didn't get declared uh, one carry in that game. Um, Tennessee, 12 points, six points against Minnesota. You know, it's just been very, up and down for Bijan. You've clearly seen the talent in Bijan. His yards mm-hmm. per carry are astronomically high, even on a mediocre Atlanta team. But this team continues to just make terrible, terrible uh, decisions when it comes to player usage. And, you know, they're constantly going to Tyler Algier in the red zone instead of Bijan Robinson, the guy you took eighth overall because, oh, we don't want to overwork him. Like, I hate I hate Arthur Smith so much. I hate him so much. So Arthur Smith is going to get fired. He's going to lose a couple of games here to end this year. So that'll mm-hmm. be fun. They're playing the Colts this weekend. I hope they absolutely smash them. Um, they get the Bears, and I even think the Bears can beat the Atlanta Falcons at this point in time. And then Agreed. they get, they close on the Saints. So more than likely, Arthur Smith is going to lose his job. We're going to have somebody come in here who's actually going to feature Drake London, feature Kyle Pitts, feature Bijan Robinson. And better days are going to be ahead for Bijan. So it's a bad year. He has to make the naughty list. I think we owe it to ourselves as a community to, you know, bang on the players that that don't live up to expectations. And Bijan is not yep. above that. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, I saw this chart today actually saying that like that like at, like for the whole season that like Arthur Smith has been the worst offensive play caller. Yep. And it, and it, and it's and it's been it's been even worse than like the Patriots. Oh yeah, he's me. terrible, man. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been like twice as bad as like the Patriots, even the Bears with like Luke Getze and all of the screens that he calls. Yep. You know, it's it's been it's been it's been really uh like Arthur Smith. I've said this before, like he feels like he like wants to be the smartest guy in the room. Yep. Try to try to outsmart everybody, and he's really not that good. He's a nepo baby that you know ha- has this job and. He's not doing very well at it and he's going to lose his job, which, which I'm, I feel bad for him, but he also did it to himself and better days for Bijan are, you know, are much ahead. Um, but if I'm the Bijan odor, I'm holding him. I, oh, I, for sure. I, for sure. I, I, I know I cannot get the same value that I. Oh, I think you could still get a premium for Bijan, but it's not worth it. I, again, better no, days are ahead. Not. So just, just hold the asset. You know, it's a bad time, 100%. but if you're freaking out about Bijan because he was crowned so quickly, don't worry too much. That's kind of the whole, yes. you know, I've seen Agreed. people that have been panic selling Bijan because he's not living up to what he was and, you yeah. know, just, just hold, just hold. So yep. um, my nice player I'm going to talk about really quickly here. Running back is going to be Rashad White. He's the dynasty running back four, or he's the the number four running back on the year right now. Sophomore player last year, he was a rookie, but this year he's been playing really, really well. And, you yep. know, it's, I think it's kind of ironic, you know, people kind of wrote him off. They didn't think that he was going to be able to live up to it too much. He's not great on the ground. I'm not going to lie to you. But again, if you go back to the preseason, people were not excited about the Tampa Bay offensive line. And I think their offensive line has issues, but Tampa Bay has been playing really well this year, much better than a lot of people, including myself, expected, right? He is, he's got 800 yards rushing right now. He'll probably get to a thousand, um, on the ground, which is fine. You know, it's not elite numbers, but it's totally fine. He's got five rushing touchdowns, but where he's been making a massive difference, he has 50 catches on the year in 14 games. It's just a huge difference maker there, um, through the air. So 
I think that's his biggest strength. He's got three receiving touchdowns. He's got another almost 500 yards receiving. So you couple all that together, and it's why he's been so consistent week in and week out. And this team is going to bring back Baker Mayfield in 2024, yeah. I believe, because they've played themselves out of out of those elite quarterbacks, right? And I think that they're going to be in line for an offensive lineman in the draft, and they're going to try and build around Baker and this team. So um, Rashad White, I don't think he's really going to have much competition. He's played well enough. Maybe they're going to take a guy in round three, round four, but I don't think you're going to have massive draft capital invested to compete with Rashad White. So I like him a lot, and I think he's played very, very well this year. What are your thoughts? Yes, I, I completely agree with that. Um, I got this one wrong. Um, I thought he was going to be trash this year with a trash offensive line, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I did, I did see the path of 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 him having having the receiving success that he's had. Um, but he's far exceeded my expectations. You know, I, I unfortunately traded him for like a this for like the two hundred one this, this past year and. You know, I kind of wish I had Rashad White instead of the two hundred one. Yeah. So you yep. know, you know, it, it it happens. He's played really well. Um, but I'm interested to see how this um Baker Mayfield led offense kind of morphs without maybe some of their top weapon weapons. Like they may not bring back uh, Mike Evans. They they may. I think they will. I I, they I prob- do. But... They 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 probably will. But you know, I I also think that that they're gonna get more weapons. Yeah, you know, yep. in 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 the backfield especially because like there's really nobody behind him. Like they cut um, Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, they cut. You know, I mean, it's just Chase Edmonds. I think behind him. So, right. yeah, I'm. I I think he's played really well this year. But you know, like if you can, I, I, I think he's huh? a sell high. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I I, right. I think he's a All sell right. high player. Fair enough. All right, let's jump over to the receivers. Who's your naughty player receiver here? You want to talk? You might as well just talk about both of them because this is a, I, a I, tandem, I, right? I will. Yeah, I will talk about both of them because they are part of Mile High Country. So my on my naughty list is Jerry Booty Judy. He's played <laughs> horrifically this year, yeah. and um, I di- I didn't really want to believe Steve Smith in 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 him saying that that Judy's not him, but he's not. He's mm-hmm. he's he's very he's way underperformed this year. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, he's 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 not even the first option on a on a on a run heavy team, right. you know. So, um, yeah, he's he only has one touchdown this year. He's he's the wide receiver. He's the wide receiver fifty four. Yep, it's not great. And, and it's not great. Yes, yes. And and if you did startups this year, he he was not drafted at wide receiver fifty four. No. So oh. so not not even close. You've been extremely disappointed. I think you know he's had a lot. Like he's had a couple dub, double digit weeks, but nothing spectacular he's only got the end zone once you know like his best game was it looks like against miami or early on the, in the year you know and he and he had 81 yards and that's that's been his season high and that's yep. not very good for for someone that was drafted as high as him yep so he's dropped like he's his value has dropped by about dropped half like a rock. yeah it's it's yes. been crazy so all right, who's your who? You might as well talk about your nice player here. Yeah, while we're, yeah, while we're yeah, yeah. On, on the on the other side is Cortland Sutton, who 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 in in the off season I, 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 I said could be a wide receiver one. Yep. Uh, you know, you know, Nailed he's not one. at. Yeah, yeah, he's pretty close. He, he's 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 wide receiver twenty one. So, you know, he he's at least a solid wide receiver too. He's someone you're, you're he's someone that you're going to start every week mm-hmm. because he's had he's he's been having touchdowns. Like every other week, he 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 has ten touchdowns on the year, mm-hmm. and and he seems to be uh, Russell Wilson's favorite target in the red zone for sure. Yeah, for yeah, sure. In the, yeah, in in the red zone, a hundred percent. Like I I I think it's I think it's like him and Javante are like one and two in in targets. I would I would say for the team, it feels like mm-hmm. so in the pecking order. So you know, I I do understand that that this player's boom bust, but I think for this year, he's been more boom. He's been very consistent. And of the and and for the asking price of him was you know probably wide receiver probably closer to wide receiver fifty four yeah for yeah these so, two were flipped completely so, yeah flipped flipped a hundred percent so so I'm you know I'm 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 glad I jumped aboard the Cortland Sutton train because I kind of saw it you know he he's more of a big bodied guy compared to Judy who's a little bit smaller you know but so yeah um no and really quickly I'll, I'll I mean 
props to you. You nailed Cortland Sutton. I did not think he was going to be that guy, but everyone yep. talks about him as being the Michael Thomas for this offense, and Judy was kind of the, the odd man out. They really liked Tim Patrick before he retore yep. his Achilles, I believe. I think so. Um, yeah. And the, the, the one thing I will caveat Jerry Judy with, you know, at this point in time, it's very easy to kind of give up and, you know, give up all hope. The one bright side to Jerry Judy, if you look at his yards per catch, when he catches the ball, he is all green on sleeper, right? Yep. His yards per target are not great. They're targeting very, very short, not down the field at all. Um, his yards are mediocre. His touchdowns are bad. Through the first two years was the whole quarterback fiasco. Last year was bad Russ. And then this year... He's just not the priority in this offense. And, you know, Sean Payton has ultimate say on this team. I still think better days could be ahead for Jerry Judy. I think he is a prime trade candidate. He's going into his fifth year option. The yep. team doesn't really love him anyway. They drafted Marvin Mims in the second round last year. They're going to try and eventually get him more involved in this team. Um, I think that Marvin Mims is just coming along a little bit slower than they were kind of hoping in terms of Sean Payton's whole playbook but i think the broncos are going to miss playoffs they're going to be down there on the draft order a little bit they're going to be competitive but not quite to playoff level and i think that this team is going to move on from jerry judy they're going to move him for like a second third round pick close to the actual nfl draft he's a prime candidate for it again going into his fifth year option i think someone like the panthers or the giants again a lot of these teams that are really wide receiver needy there was all the rumors about them going and getting him before the trade deadline but ultimately nothing happened right so i think it's going to happen this year and if he goes to carolina right i think he vaults back up into that wide receiver two territory but i get all the skepticism about that right now so um you know, holding, if you have Jerry Judy, just do not be buying right now. And, uh, yep. you know, congratulations to the Cortland Sutton owners. But, yeah, nobody's Absolutely. buying that. Nobody's selling that. So that's just it, – yeah. it's a dead dead player there. But uh, yeah, congratulations. So, um, all right, my naughty wide receiver is going to be Garrett Wilson. And, again, this is kind of like Bijan, right? It's not really fair to him of – it's not his fault. But I right, will say right. – with Garrett Wilson, he's been he's the wide receiver twenty five on the year. Not been great. He's not been living up to what the hype was around him. And okay, the immediate excuse is going to be, well, they lost Aaron Rodgers in Week One. You dummy. Well, of course he's not living up to that. Even still, even still, I don't think he would have lived up to the expectations with Aaron Rodgers this year. And the reason being, this offensive line and this offensive system are so bad. They're so bad. Even with Aaron Rodgers, if he hadn't torn his Achilles, they would have gotten blasted every single week, and they would have struggled every single week. Now, Aaron Rodgers is going to throw a prettier ball. He can get it to him on target, so maybe his yardage goes up a little bit. But I don't think he's going to be top five wide receiver like he was priced before the season. And this is my biggest fear about Garrett Wilson is – they are going to bring back Aaron Rodgers next year. They've already said that more than likely Sala and um, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe, who's their, their GM? I forget his name. Joe, Joe uh, Douglas. Joe Douglas. Yeah. They're going to be back for next year, obviously. And obviously they wanted to go and get Broderick Jones in the draft and the Pittsburgh Steelers traded with the Patriots and just absolutely screwed them on that. But they need a complete overhaul again on this offensive line again. And until they do that and they get away from Nathaniel Hackett, this offense is going to suck again. And it's just not going to change in 2024. And I think that this is kind of the last chance for Garrett Wilson to sell high because I think next year he's going to have a bad year again where he's not going to live up to the hype and it's going to kill his value. Like I would be selling high now and then after 2024, rebuying because he's going to be in the prime position of being either a trade candidate or the whole team's going to implode and they're going to, you know, try and move assets and, and all these other things, right? So Garrett Wilson, better days are ahead, but they're way farther ahead. That's that's my fear with Garrett Wilson. And uh, you can share your thoughts on him here really quickly. In yeah, one I, I, d- I definitely hear, I hear that. You know, I'm not as doom and gloom as you are, but I do see it. 
I mean, he has you know, 138 I, 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 targets on the year. It's not like he's not getting yeah, targeted. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're Tim Boyle and I get they're it. I get Zach it. Wilson targets who are overthrowing him and throwing ridiculous hail mary pick sixes. Sure, but you know, you know. So I, I like I, 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 I do agree with your point that he's his his hype in the off season was so immense with mm-hmm. with with uh, Rogers coming in. I, I think he and there there was going to be no way he was going to live up to that. Right. There, 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 there wasn't. So, you know, I do think that he could be a top, you know, a top 12 guy with Rodgers. I really think he could. I think he could be fringe, and, but people are going to still value yeah. him as like a top five, sure. six yeah. guy. And that's why yeah. I'm saying. If you can get a premium on him, I would consider it at this point. It depends what the, what the package so, is, you know? So like, what's, so like, so like, would you trade like, what, like a, like a Jalen Waddle plus? If, to, well, I would rather the, have... You know, I'm just so I'd rather have Garrett Wilson with Aaron Rodgers than Jalen Waddle. Right. But what about this? Would you trade Puka plus a early second? I would want Wilson. I, I I'm not a big fan of Puka, and I and I know we're gonna talk about him here in a minute. But um, right. I think he's been I think he's a little overvalued in my opinion. But you know, I am okay being wrong on that. But. Yeah. Uh, what about um? Oh, who is the player I just had in mind? Oh, uh, JSN. What about JSN and? A late first. I'd probably do JSN and a, and a late first. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think there, yeah. you can find the player that you really like, but if you could get a plus on some of these other, like, up-and-coming players, I think you could do that trade for Garrett Wilson because the hype is still, especially you wait until the offseason, right? Wait until about yeah. four months. Wait until Rodgers is at training camp, OTAs, right? Oh, he's back. The Achilles is, is working, you know? He's, and, 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 he's, and he's actually back and yeah, of like they're not doing any, doing they're not doing any stuff. contact yeah. at OTAs, man. And he's going to be out there throwing on air, right? Laying he's not going to get yep. touched. Wait for that highlight reel where it's the slow mo catch of Garrett Wilson running the route. You know, you know the one from last year, right? And the hype around Garrett Wilson is going to be out of this world again. And sell him, sell him for JSN plus a first. Get him out of here because I just think that he's going to underperform yet again. It had to be said on Garrett Wilson. I like Garrett Wilson. I think he's a yeah. very good receiver, he but he is cursed by the Jets. It is not yeah, his he fault. Is. He, he he is no. And I was so sad that he went to the Jets because I knew he was going to a <laughs> dumpster fire yep. and, of, of an organization. So yep. and that's what it, it's it's Robin Williams, you know, from uh, from what is that Goodwill Hunting? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, it's, it's not. not fault. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's not his fault, but it's just it's, it's it, it, nothing's going to change. And my that's my fear for Garrett Wilson. So I'm selling him high if I can, and he's on the naughty list for this year. Now my nice player, this guy has outproduced my expectations by a mile, and that's going to be Michael Pittman for the Colts, yes. and he's currently the wide receiver number ten. He's just balling out. He might be playing. He he might have gotten banged up in this last game, but. Even with Gardner Minshew, now I'm a little worried about what he can do with Anthony Richardson, but we saw a couple games with him and he was fine. You know, he was still fine. He had 11 targets from Richardson in week one, 12 in week two, and I think week three was mostly Anthony Richardson, if I remember right, um, before they kind of transitioned to Gardner Minshew, who's been hit or miss, but Shane, Shane Steichen feels like a very good head coach. He should win. If they make playoffs, I think he should win coach of the year, in my opinion. But, um, Shane Steichen feels like a very good head coach. He feels like a very great offensive mind. And Michael Pittman, everyone's going to say, oh, but he's a free agent. Yeah, they're going to pay this guy. They are going to bring him him back in. They need this guy. He is their entire offense right now. Him and JT are their core offensive players. And I think with Anthony Richardson coming back, people might be a little bit leery about Michael Pittman's volume yet again. And I think that he's a stud and he's going to continuously be fringe quarterback or uh, not quarterback fringe wide receiver one, but he's going to always be in this range. And I think that he's a very good player who has produced, right? He's just produced this entire year. So Michael Pittman is a stud and uh, I think he deserves recognition here today. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. He's 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 balled out this year and he's made himself a lot of money. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, I'll, 20 I'll million a that. year, something I, I don't I'll, know, I'll 18 million, million a year, something like that. Yeah, he's gonna it's, get paid. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of money to stay in Indy and I think it's gonna help it's gonna help it's gonna help the whole offense for him to be there. Um, you know, I, I do think he's going to have a little dip in, in numbers, but I don't think it's going to be as significant because he's still going to get 10, 12 targets a game. Yeah. Easy. Yep. I mean, so. 
if he deserves them, why not? You know, so yeah, absolutely. All right, let's jump over to the tight ends real quick. We'll uh, we'll talk about your naughty player here. Is cheap shots, man? Cheap shots. Yep, yep. I am taking cheap shots at Arthur Smith. <laughs> I'll do that every day of the week. I'll do it every minute of my life if I could. Um, it's Kyle Pitts. He's been under- underwhelming. He's he's a tight end fifteen, Calvin. I know that's bad. Know. That's so bad. He's getting outplayed you know, by Johnny Smith, man. Like yes, it is. Yes. What it is. So like, so please, for the love of God, Arthur Blank, fire Arthur Smith, please. Please, please do it. I I really wish he would have fired him after the after the Carolina game. Oh, dude, he should have. That game you was can't so lose to bad, Carolina, man. You can. It was it was so bad. It was so bad, dude. and oh, um, man. you know, he's he's just he's he's underutilized. He's not he's not a blocker. He's 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 more of a slot wide receiver, is what he is. And they don't and target him. He, right, crazy and he's not, man. And and and, and they have bad quarterback play by yep. by Desmond Ritter. You know, I, I think he I think he might have better chance with Taylor Heineke, but not much. Mm-hmm. So so the Falcons need a quarterback, and I don't know who that who that saver is going to be. It might be you know Captain Kirk, but they need someone. They Fields man. They need a better quarterback. Yeah, yeah Fields, I, I hope man. it's Fields. I hope it's Fields. I really yeah. Do. I but, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the Bears are going to keep Fields, but yeah, you know but that's beside the point, dude. They they need to clean house. They need to get rid of Arthur Smith, and just yes. like with Bijan it's not even tired. Like we, we have no idea if it's Kyle Pitts's fault or not because freaking Arthur Smith is the worst. Like he just, you can't, He's you can't even really evaluate the play players, going. right? We know yes, that Drake yes. London is the dude, but is Kyle Pitts just bad or is it the scheme or is it usage or what, what the hell is going on? I mean, this is the same player who as a rookie, a rookie had 110 targets 68 catches, not a great catch percentage there, I will say. But a thousand yards as a rookie with one touchdown. Like that was yeah. uh that was Arthur Smith. That was the Arthur Smith era with Matt Ryan, but still, man, like what? But it's with Matt Ryan, a a, a, a competent quarterback. Oh, yeah. You know, and even, even though crazy. he was aging, but they, they you know, they haven't had a competent quarterback since Matt Ryan or anything I close. Like I know. Like they it's need all to get Arthur Smith's fault, the, man. I mean, it, it is. It is. You take these guys this high, you have to be able to feature them, and he's just he yes. won't do it. So, um, all right, enough about <laughs> enough. You're making me sad yes. about Kyle Pitts. Who's yes. your? Uh, I'm I, I'm also sad about Kyle Pitts. So so on my nice list is is some people's tight end one, which is nuts to me. He he he. My my dynasty tight end. I've been seeing people I be seen crazy this about this guy. Yep. I have seen and this a it, lot. It, it it is not Sam Laporta. It's Trey McBride. I yeah. lo- I I I really like Trey McBride. He's been really um, good. <laughs> I, I, yes, I, I really liked him coming out of Colorado State. Mm-hmm. You know, he's I, I think he was the Michael Mayer of his the, draft of, class. Of, yeah, yeah of, of his draft class. You know, he's he's a solid guy. He he's a he's a chain mover. He's he's not really the most physical guy, but you know, he's he's a solid guy. Like he doesn't get a lot of touchdowns always, but he's a little like, he's undersized. A you know, he's six foot yeah. four, two fifty or two forty six, which is yeah, small so, for a tight end, but you know. Yep. He's he's yeah. I your your comp to Michael Mayer is the perfect comp, right? Like yes. Trey McBride is a very good player. And no hands, no doubts about it, right? So uh, yeah, yeah, and and it's and it's and his and his usage has really picked up since Kyler's been back. Well, it's also it it couples with so, Zach Ertz being injured, right? Yes, yes, one hundred percent there too. Yes. So I I don't think you know everyone expects these tight ends to be amazing instantly and they always take a little bit of time but he is only a sophomore player and the massive step from year one to year two I don't think can be ignored so I I think this was right. a great call out um, yeah. no I would you know if if people are offering you tight end one value for him take it oh heck yeah take oh it. take 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 it all day yeah yes. t- take 100%. take it <laughs> but uh would, would well I I have to ask this would you tr- would you trade Trey McBride, Trey McBride for Kyle Pitts? No, I'd rather have McBride. He's that's being fair. used, that's man. Fair. Like that's know, the I know, thing. I know. Like I, I know, I agree. I so agree sad. with you. I hear it's it. So sad. It's not even because it like, maybe next year I, in the off season after the the Arthur Smith firing and them getting a quarterback, I will uh, I'll believe a little bit more. But right. yeah, as of right now, the yeah. current yeah. situation and, and, for Atlanta, no. <laughs> right, right, and and I am a little bit worried because they well, I'm I'm worried, but I'm not about next year with with, with Trey McBride because I know mm-hmm. they're probably going to bring another pass catching option there. Yeah, I'm not too I, worried I, about I, that. I, I, yeah, I, but but I'm not too worried about it because Kyler does like to target the tight end. Yeah, he, he yep. always he always has he always has and he always will, and he's going to be their tight end of 
Yep. And you know, the one thing, the one thing to think about that too, when we're going into, it's going to be interesting to see how they attack this, this off season, right? Because they have a new GM. They finally moved on from Steve Kime. Um, their Thank new, God. I think it's Monty Osenbor. Is that their, that, that, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, who was a very big analytics guy. He's, he's a smart guy. You know, he pulled the, the trade for, um, the trade back this last year from what was it? I think three, he Three. traded with uh, the Texans, right? So they, Texans, they could go yep. and get uh, Will Anderson in the draft. Moves back to to whatever it was, um, gets the tackle. Six. Yeah, six, six right. Yep. And, you know, he, he does it perfectly. Gets the extra first-round pick, all that stuff. They're going to have two first-rounders in this upcoming draft, and I think it's going to be good for them. I think that, you know, there's all these yep. talk about them getting another offensive lineman to just help protect Kyler Murray even more. There's some talk about them going for a quarterback, but I – I don't see that. I kinda, Kyler, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of doubt it. This Kyler point. Murray's contract is too, too cumbersome to move on from yes. at this point in time. Um, and if they go for an offensive lineman, which I could totally see, you got to remember they got Jonathan Gannon as their head coach, who is a defensive guy. They want, and this defense is awful. Like this defense is terrible. It's got a few good players, but it's got a lot of holes. So I think that they're going to really try and and hammer the the. Um, the defensive side of the ball in the draft, you know, they've got, I think that they're going to roll with Hollywood Brown. They're going to roll with Trey McBride, maybe get um, another pass catcher later on. But for the most part, they're going to really try and bring back a lot of these guys. So I like it. I think he's safe for a tight end position, which has been devoid of talent. It feels like forever now. So for a long time. Yeah. All right, my naughty list player here is going to be Darren Waller. And I, again, this shouldn't wah, wah. shock yeah, anybody, but he has shocked. been undervalued. He's been so bad for fantasy this year. And I get it, he's been banged up. But I mean, that goes with the territory when you're that old, right? He was the dynasty tight end number four. Going into the season, going into the season, all the reports from camp were, oh, Darren Waller is uh, is the favorite target of this offense. All Every play is going to Darren Waller. Then he gets injured, and he just doesn't play. Oh, wait, but, oh, he got injured, but he played for seven straight games, and only three of them were double digits. And, you know, that's 90 80% snap sh- share in all of those games, and he just he only had three games, double digits. Like he has been bad. This off, this Giants offense has been bad, and you know I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. He's going to be 32 next year, and you know I he's just never going to be up to that value that you spent on him in this last off season. And for that, he lands on the naughty list, and I think it's going to just continue to be worse for Darren Waller. It's kind of your last chance to move on from him, in my opinion, but. You know, it's sad. It's it's definitely sad. Darren Waller had a couple good years there, but you know, two years, three years, two good seasons, three years ago at this point, and that's just it's not good enough, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, and I I think at this point Waller's untradeable. Like I don't think yep. a lot of people are gonna want him unless they don't have a tight end themselves, right? You, you know, in in all honesty, so you know, I. I I feel bad for him that he, that, that that he got injured because I I was really excited for him too, uh you know I was I was drinking some of the Kool Aid you know I, I I I had I had tempered expectations but you know I, I I expected him to do something this year I didn't expect him to be great but I yeah. expected him to do something and he's, he's done still tied in twenty three <laughs> so that's trash <laughs> I I, Cal Calvin I could hey he's I a tight maybe, end too man I, I I mean I mean <laughs> I I could maybe attempt tight end tight. sucks. <laughs> So but uh, I know it does. Uh, all right. My nice list player. This one was a clear and obvious win for me. Again, this is like my Stroud. I'm just tooting my own horn at this point. But Sam Laporta for the Detroit Lions as a rookie. Tight end number three on the season. The dude is just playing extremely well. And, you know, it, all the signs were there. You've got a tight end drafted above Michael Mayer in the second round. Second tight end drafted. In the second round, I think like the second pick of the, of day two there, and goes to a team with a devoid hole, black hole at, at position two for pass catcher, right? They've got Amon Ross, St. Brown, and who? Who is their next guy, right? Goes to a tight end head coach, former tight end head coach <laughs> with oh. a cooking offense, right? That loves, Jared Goff loves to go to the tight end position. 
Every sign was there from day one that this guy was going to have a good season. Then training camp comes around and he's balling out in training camp. All the reports are this dude is amazing and he has killed it. You know, there's been games where he hasn't been amazing. He's got, you know, two weeks ago against Chicago, four points, um, a few in week number 11, six points, eight points. But the dude has been so much better than average this entire season. And he's a rookie. Everyone's saying, oh, well, you know, he's not going to get better than this. This he's, he's capped out. This is a ceiling. This is just the beginning, man. This guy is going to have an amazing career, and I'm here for it. Um, Sam Laporta, hopefully you got him all you could because he has vaulted to a lot of people's tight end one for Dynasty. Now, is that fair? What are, what are your thoughts? Do you think that's justifiable at this point for I Sam think, Laporta? Well, I think in the top two or three, yes. Yeah. I, I, I think it's too early to crown him as one because, you know, I think a lot of things went his way. I would still take you TJ know, Hawkinson over him and Mark Andrews, yeah. I think. But that, that, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's that's very fair. But I think he, he's a very solid top three guy. Like mm-hmm. like he's gonna get his targets. And you know, that's what you want in in a tight end position. And in in and and then in rookie drafts, like he went, you know, in 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 some in some rookie drafts I had, like he went at the end of the second round into the third round. Yeah. Yep. So it's crazy, man. Like you got to steal for him. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So, no, uh, Sam Laporta. I just wanted to toot my own horn a little bit there, but also talk about him, highlight him because he's been that good this year. So, um, the other guy I was going to mention too at tight end, really quickly, just before we finish this thing out, was going to be T.J. Hawkinson, who has gone under every radar. It feels like at tight end of this guy is not getting talked about enough, but the dude's just balling out this year. And I get it, you know, there's the whole Kirk injury and they're they're kind of going through some stuff now. Justin Jefferson's been out, but TJ Hawkinson has just been so consistent. He's the dynasty tight end number one. Last year was the number two. And like everyone was saying going into this year, oh, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. The dude gets so many targets and he does well with them. Like he's not he's just a reliable pass catcher. And you know, it'll be interesting to see what what Minnesota does next year. But just wanted to highlight TJ as well before we get out of here. All right, any last thoughts here? Send it on home. All right, well, thank you guys for joining us here today. Hopefully, you liked our naughty and nice list, and we gave you some actionable stuff as well to go with it. We know we don't want to just talk about these guys. We want to give you some good ideas on what to do with these players as well. But you know. We're getting ready for the holiday season, and we just wanted to have a fun episode as well, talking about some of these good players, some of these underperforming players, and just have a good time with you guys. So, again, if you can, please comment on the video, like this video, subscribe to the channel. All that helps us out. If you can, follow us over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin, at Dynasty underscore Dale, and at FF After Dark. You can find the podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, Rumble, anywhere that podcasts are really found. And we appreciate you guys. Have some happy holidays. You know, have some good time with your family if you're out there. Good luck in your matchups. Again, hit us up with any start and sit questions. But we appreciate you guys. Hopefully you guys have made it this far in your leagues. But it's been a fun year. It's been a weird year for fantasy for sure. But we'll be back next year before the finals. And, again, we're going to have one more video, I think, before we get out of here for the season. But, yeah, we're going we're gonna to have a good time. And once the new year rolls around, It's going to be on fire. We're going to have so much content for you guys. So that's it. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, have a good night. And we all got dreams. We all want things. But what you going to do for it? How you going to move for it? What you going to be?